Good evening and welcome to News Review. At a meeting in Madrid on Thursday with his UK counterpart, Philip Hammond, the Spanish Foreign Minister, José Manuel García Margallo, made further suggestions about how ad hoc talks could work, proposals which Mr Hammond said he would now put to the Gibraltar government. Cristina Cortés was in the Spanish capital. Today's visit forms part of a tour which has seen the Foreign Secretary visit over 20 European Union member states to put the case for EU reform. This was the primary focus of the meeting, but also on the agenda were broader issues such as the threat of terrorism, the situation in Ukraine and, of course, Gibraltar, a topic Mr. Margallo in particular devoted a great deal of time to in his comments to the press stating for one that negotiations for ad hoc talks had been advanced. El nuevo esquema contemplaría la participación de España y del Reino Unido, así como de las autoridades locales gibraltareñas y también de las autoridades locales y regionales españolas que sean competentes en cada una de las materias que tengan que ser discutidas e incluidas en la agenda. La Comisión Europea, en su condición de guardiana de los tratados, eh, también sería invitado. Estoy convencido de que llegaremos pronto a un acuerdo que mejora, permitirá mejorar las condiciones de vida de los ciudadanos a ambos lados de la verja. Es otra cosa es que haya cálculos electorales en Gibraltar que aconsejen en estos momentos no facilitar esos acuerdos. Pero eh, desde el punto de vista español eh, no estamos dispuestos a sentarnos esta misma tarde si las partes están dispuestas a coger un avión y irse a Bruselas. The UK remains uh, strongly committed to the trilateral forum uh, and we will continue to work towards ad hoc talks on a range of issues of mutual uh, interest. Uh, 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 Minister um, Garcia Magallo has uh, made some proposals today about how we might move forward uh, towards the, uh, starting the ad hoc talks. So we will consult with the gov government of Gibraltar uh, on those proposals, and we hope that it will be possible for us to begin those talks uh, in the near future. For his part, Mr. Margallo said that Spain continues to urge the UK to resume bilateral talks over Gibraltar's sovereignty, as per the 1984 Brussels Agreement. The Spanish Foreign Secretary said he'd also put forward a proposal to create a suspension clause for Gibraltar's airport to allow EU aviation legislation to go forward. Mr. Hammond said one of the issues he raised during the meeting, along with border delays and maritime incursions, were the delays caused, he said, by Spain's objections to Gibraltar's inclusion. GBC and Gibraltar Chronicle reporters were originally denied accreditation for the press call, but were then allowed in minutes before the event started, after our exclusion had been highlighted in the news. We also spoke with Philip Hammond after the press call. Speaking to us here at the British Embassy in Madrid, Mr. Hammond roundly rejected any concerns that either today's bilateral meeting or any future ad hoc talks would in any way entertain the question of Spain's claim to sovereignty over Gibraltar. Cristina Cortés, GBC News, Madrid. And following the meeting, Fabian Picardo delayed Chief Minister's questions to deliver a government statement to Parliament. In a separate statement to the media, the chief minister also condemned statements made in Madrid by the Spanish foreign minister. Fabian Picardo said the foreign secretary had raised the issue of the continued incursions by Spanish state vessels into British Gibraltar territorial waters, which he told his Spanish counterpart were illegal under international law and therefore unacceptable. The chief minister told Parliament that Philip Hammond had also raised the continued delays at the frontier. Mr Picardo was keen to highlight that yesterday's meeting did not amount to bilateral negotiation and that the Foreign Secretary's position had been previously agreed with the Gibraltar government. Mr Hammond had also expressed the UK and Gibraltar's disappointment at Spain's holding up of EU aviation and their willingness to return to dialogue and to the trilateral forum adding that in the meantime they would work towards ad hoc talks. The Chief Minister told Parliament that the Spanish Foreign Minister had made a further proposal in this respect, 
which the government would now consider with its UK colleagues. Meanwhile, in a statement yesterday evening, the government condemned statements by the Spanish foreign minister. In particular, his repeated insistence that there may be a chance of an imminent return to Brussels talks. Number six highlights that Gibraltar has a double lock veto on the restart of those talks. The parliament and the people of Gibraltar all agree there should never be a return to sovereignty negotiations without Gibraltar's consent. Number six says that veto is exercised now and will continue to be forever. The full statement to Parliament can be found on GBC's website. And speaking to GBC and the Gibraltar Chronicle at the British Embassy after his meeting with Mr Malagayo, Philip Hammond said he hoped progress could be made towards having ad hoc talks in the not-too-distant future. His counterpart, Mr. Margallo, had recently said in the Spanish Parliament that no true Spaniard would recognize the office of the Chief Minister or the Constitution of Gibraltar. It was put to Mr. Hammond that comments such as these and actions such as the imminent closure of the Cervantes Institute raised questions over how constructive ad hoc talks could go forward. Well, the whole point about the proposed ad hoc talks is that they are absolutely compatible with a complete disagreement on constitutional questions. The whole idea of them is to set aside the constitutional uh, issues and to talk about practical things that will affect the lives and livelihoods of Gibraltarians and people living uh, in the area of Spain immediately adjacent uh, to Gibraltar. And I think um, it, will, it is in everybody's interest that we try and lower the tensions at the border, we try and make practical solutions to better collaboration where we can without bringing into question any of the issues around sovereignty uh, and territoriality. With regards to EU aviation legislation, uh, Senor Margallo uh, put forward, uh, said he'd put forward a proposal to create an exclusion clause, clause for Gibraltar um, so as to go ahead with the legislation. What exactly does this uh, proposal entail and uh, what's your response? Well, it, um, uh, if I've understood the proposal, it is to exclude Gibraltar from EU aviation legislation, which is completely unacceptable to us and completely unacceptable to the government of Gibraltar, and I have explained that to him. One last thing, if I may. Um, what would you say to reassure anyone in Gibraltar who thinks that um, there might have been some kind of a bilateral discussion and something being hatched behind their backs today? Uh, there was a bilateral discussion, but it was about the European Union, uh, about Russia in Ukraine, about the fight against uh, ISIL and extremist Islamist terrorism. Of course, we touched on uh, Gibraltar issues. Um, I had to raise those issues because they're an issue uh, of continuing concern uh, to us. But the uh, uh, Spanish Foreign Minister understands very well uh, our commitment not to enter into any bilateral uh, negotiations with Spain on Gibraltar. We remain strongly committed to the trilateral forum, uh, and until we get back to the trilateral forum, the only talks that there will be will be the ad hoc talks about which we've already spoken. And in more reactions to the closure of the Instituto Cervantes, the Cross Frontier Group described the Spanish Foreign Secretary's decision as the result of a pathological obsession with Gibraltar. The group, made up of unions and business organizations from both sides of the border, says its aim is to promote business and cultural links between both communities. It says Jose Manuel Garcia Margallo is obsessed with the rock and will dismantle all the positive steps made towards understanding and cooperation within the Cordoba Agreement. When ignorance meets arrogance, the results can be catastrophic. This is how former socialist senator Jose Caragao described the Spanish foreign minister's move to close the Instituto Cervantes in Gibraltar. The government and the opposition clashed this week over the fuel for the new power station and whether liquid natural gas is the better alternative. The GSD reiterates the government intends to handle large quantities of liquid natural gas in a densely populated area. It states it's the government that's acting irresponsibly in a number of ways, one of these being by carrying out safety studies after having awarded the tender for a new power station. It adds that anywhere else in the world, very detailed risk analysis and public consultation would have taken place before democratic government decided to build a liquid natural gas installation. It insists it's not about scaremongering, but safety, something which, as an opposition, it has the responsibility to highlight. 
For its part, the government says the original contract with Boyd was for the design, build and all safety reports associated with the new power station. Having received these initial results, it says it's commissioned further highly detailed checks and risk assessments. Number 6 points out that without the raw data from the original reports, Mr Featham's experts cannot be expected to draw accurate conclusions. In this sense, it adds, Mr Featham is acting irresponsibly by attempting to instigate a public plan with little or no evidence. It also tells the opposition that it's named all its consultants and says it would like him to take this into account before refusing to name his own sources and then calling upon the government to make commercially sensitive information public. In Parliament this week, the Minister for Economic Development, Joe Bosano, accused the leader of the opposition of doing everything he can do to undermine the success of the Gibraltar Savings Bank and said he won't help him do so by providing information to Parliament. This was in response to a charge of using the savings bank as an unaccountable credit card to fund government projects levelled at him by Daniel Featham. The inevitable exchange on public finances followed a list of questions tabled by the leader of the opposition, where it emerged that government cash reserves stand at nearly 53 million and the aggregate public debt at 200 million. In a manner consistent with previous meetings of Parliament, Minister Vosano said he was not willing to provide any further details on transfers to and from Credit Finance and Gibraltar Investment Holdings. Daniel Featham said Parliament was entitled to know how public money is being spent and described Mr Vosano's answer as an unprecedented attempt to pull the shutters on public finances. He accused the government of not being able to fund its capital projects and using the savings bank as an unaccountable credit card. Mr. Vosano said Mr. Fitin was doing everything possible to undermine the success of the savings bank and wouldn't be helping the leader of the opposition to do so by giving him the details he was asking for. He said no finance institution, public or private, gives that type of detail. The former chief minister, Peter Caruana, then waded in. He said he wasn't going to judge on the merits of what the government wanted to spend the money on and argued that the expense may well be justified. But he insisted the money had to be accounted for. Mr. Vosano said that many of the practices which the GSD now considered unaccountable were invented by the GSD when they were in government. The vast majority of the morning was taken up by a series of questions by opposition member Selwyn Figueras on the recently published draft Sustainable Traffic Transport and Parking Plan. The Minister for Transport and Traffic, Paul Valvan, revealed that there were no plans to exclude any type of vehicles from within the city walls and no plans to introduce dedicated parking spaces for microcars, although the latter has not been ruled out. He said pilot schemes for paid parkings in the city centre were going to be introduced at Linewall Road and Waterport Road. But a congestion charge wasn't being contemplated at this stage. Mr. Rodan said the government was meeting with stakeholders to address the misgivings of the residents-only parking schemes in estates, such as lack of access for visitors. Plans for changes at the Trafalgar interchange are at an early stage but these could include a new pelican crossing and improved pedestrian access. The weather caused havoc with strong winds blowing over trees at Rosier Road and Red Sands Road. The Royal Gibraltar Police also implemented traffic diversions on Europa Road after a lamppost fell in the area. Other incidents were reported to the police with fallen masonry and glass in different estates and scaffolding made unstable by the wind. Meanwhile, attempts were made during the week to find a Spaniard who fell into the sea. The man was believed to have been on a fast launch and phoned the other two men on board after falling into the water. He also phoned a family member and gave his coordinates. During the search, the Guardia Civil came across the rigid inflatable launch with the two men who'd been with him on board. During questioning, the officers realized the launch and the three engines on it were not registered. The two men were then arrested for fraud. And we'll be back with more of this week's news after this break.